He tells me that I look young and pretty, like I'm 15. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Hello friends, Trace Amounts of Science. Today we're getting into some of the best of r slash dating hell. Yeah, we had to dig deep for these, but they're all guaranteed bangers, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. Worst first date I've ever had. I mean, everybody has to have a worst. Even if you've had the best dates ever, one of them was the worst. <laughs> Back when I was still single and dating around, I went on a few dates in the same weekend. The first one wasn't bad, but it just wasn't a connection. I got home from that and got back on the dating apps and matched with someone new. After a bit of talking, we made tentative plans to meet up the next day for lunch. Yeah, tentative plans on the dating app. Oh, that's ironclad. <laughs> I suggested we go for tacos, and she said that she had tacos the night before. So I suggested barbecue, and she said she wasn't in the mood for barbecue foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah, you need to bail on this right now. I then suggested that we go to the farmer's market, where there's plenty of options to eat, and she agreed. Yeah, nothing tastes quite as good as a $5 apple. <laughs> she suggested that I pick her up, but I don't really like to do that on first dates, so I said that we should just meet at the farmer's market. Makes sense to me. You wouldn't want to be stranded out there with me, would you? You gotta know your local bus schedule. <laughs> it was a Sunday in Nashville when we met up and the traffic was bad. And it was a very hot day in August. It took a long time to find parking, but eventually we both did. I walked up and noticed that she looked a bit different than her pictures. Not a deal breaker by any means, but admittedly put a sour taste in my mouth. You mean like she airbrushed it, or she's a great big fat girl? What's going on here? I'd like to request you to be a bit more specific. <laughs> she immediately started complaining about the traffic and parking, and yeah, I kind of brushed it off and just wanted to have a nice time. Then you probably should have come alone. <laughs> we went inside and started looking at the options. I'm not a picky eater, so I was kind of letting her make the decision on where she wanted to eat while making suggestions here and there. Of course, she denied every suggestion. <laughs> we walked around the entire place when I asked, anything calling out to you? She replied with, there is this barbecue place around the corner that looked pretty good. I bit my tongue and said, sure, that sounds great. <laughs> Uh, and round and round we go. This is a glimpse into your future together if it proceeds from here. You realize that, right? You come up with an idea and she doesn't agree until she says it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the food and I paid for it and we sat down. We started talking and the conversation was actually nice. It eventually came to a lull and she said, What should we do next? I offered that we go outside and look at all the vendors, so we did. We grabbed ice cream on the way out. Well, hey, we might salvage this thing yet. The conversation was very one-sided when we were walking around, which seemed odd to me, considering that it flowed very well while we were eating. We got done walking around and looking at the vendors, and I was about to call it and go home, and she said, So what should we do next? You're dating an NPC. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this, but that's why she can't walk and talk. It's not a multi-thread brain. <laughs> you can only focus on one task at a time. Against my better judgment, I did agree to keep the date going, as I had nothing going on that day, and I thought, yeah, what's the harm? Yeah, I guess. I just said you may salvage this thing yet, so Godspeed, you soldier of industry. <laughs> we sat down and started brainstorming. I suggested a movie, and she said she wanted to do something more social. I suggested a vineyard that I know of that's pretty nice, and she said it was way too hot for that. <laughs> she said that she wanted to see live music, and I said, yeah, that sounds fun, but it's 2 p.m. on a Sunday. So the only place in town that would have live music would be Broadway, which is a touristy part of town that most locals try to avoid. She agreed that we should not go to Broadway. Just go find the guitar man in the park or the sax man in the subway. Those people still exist, right? Nashville's got to have some buskers out, 2 p.m. on a Sunday, whatever. But we couldn't decide on plans. 
So she suggested we walk to a nearby bar and get a few drinks while we decided a little bit more. I thought that sounded great, so we did. On the way there, she noticed a group of people in the park doing exercises and made the comment, Oh my god, have you ever seen such small dick energy in your life? Which put me back, and I said, for exercising? And she said, yeah, it's just so desperate. <laughs> Bro, do you even lift? Uh, excuse me? This is for me and not you, do you understand that? I want to be big and strong. My wife asked me, lift everything I lift. Protect family, intimidate rival, get bigger. <laughs> uh, oh, now I also sort of know what women mean when they're like, this makeup's for me, it's not for anybody else. You wouldn't feel so good if I called that desperate, right? I didn't know what to say, so I kind of just brushed it off and switched topics. See, you, you keep on doing that. You need to address some of these things. I would dig deep. I'd be like, what the hell? What, what, what do you mean by that? <laughs> Can you elaborate a bit further? I exercise as well. Do I have to give all that up or, or risk being called gay? <laughs> oh, no. A tiny peepee. You got a real weirdo on your hands, dude. <laughs> so we went to the bar and got our drinks, started talking, and again, the conversation was good. Eventually, it came to a lull again, and she said once more, So what's next? <laughs> I said, honestly, I don't know. I I've made suggestions that you didn't like, and music sounds nice, but it's not really an option. She seemed upset at my response, so she stopped talking altogether and stopped looking at me as well. I paid the tab, and we started to leave. The walk back to the car was more than awkward. <laughs> yeah, just get me the hell out of here, honestly. Uh, we got to our cars, and I said, all right, bye, and she said nothing. I got a text about five minutes later from her saying that, this was the worst date I've ever had. I can't always be the one suggesting where to go next and driving the conversation. I felt absolutely dumbfounded that she thought she was doing any of that at all. <laughs> Needless to say, there wasn't a second date. I mean, I guess you let her think what she has to think to keep the ego intact, but you know already deep down in your heart, OP, that she was a whack job. <laughs> you dodged a, a wrecking ball. Miley Cyrus levels of crazy. I'd be trying to prove that I'm not crazy when I knew I wasn't crazy. Right. <laughs> so good. The date seemed like overall kind of pleasant. But yeah, for her to ask for suggestions just so she can endlessly reject them, that's that's crazy. One place that OP didn't suggest was the dog park, which is where we're going in our next story. So let's get over there. Dog park date! That's nice, that's social, maybe the dogs can make some friends too! Uh, this date isn't funny by any stretch. It's simply a bad date. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. I'll make it funny, it's fine. I started talking to a guy online, and we'll call him Mr. Starbucks. Oh my god, it's Elliot Roger, isn't it? <laughs> Elliot Roger here, enjoying a nice vanilla latte. <laughs> His two pictures online looked great. Young, well-groomed, dark-featured, great smile, nice physique, so naturally I was interested. We talked for a few days online and decided to exchange numbers. We talked briefly via text and had a few phone conversations before we decided that we should meet up for coffee. Now, to non-online daters, this can seem like a relatively fast process, and I agree that it is to avid online daters. The goal is to meet the person fairly soon so you know if there's a connection or not, and this way, you're not wasting your time. Yeah, I understand all that, but it is kind of soul-sucking, isn't it? Where's all the prelude to the first date? Whatever happened to the courtship ritual? A man would put on his, his best pair of overalls and tip his hat to my lady's father and ask permission to take her down to the drugstore for a phosphate. And if you were lucky, she'd say yes. And you'd spend the evening getting to know each other face to face like civilized human beings. But now you've got these online dating platforms swiping left and right. These people are nothing more than pictures on a screen! 
If you're lucky or very attractive, you might get a date, but more often than not, you're just left with a sore thumb and a bruised ego. Even if you do get the date, there's MySpace angles and airbrushing and, and duck faces. Why are you making a duck face? <laughs> just smile, damn you. Online dating is a load of hogwash. You give me that good old-fashioned courtship any day. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an ice-cold root beer float to attend to. Thanks, Grandpa Radix. Yeah, we'll, we'll try and keep all that in mind, I guess. <laughs> OB continues with the date planning. I'm never shocked to hear a guy say, I don't care where we go. Whatever you want to do is fine by me. This type of indecisiveness can drive a girl like me crazy. Sigh, OP. Okay, how about we grab some coffee or tea somewhere, Mr. Starbucks? Okay, there's a Starbucks on Washington Street. So I'll meet you there at like 5 p.m. OP, all right, sounds good. Looking forward to meeting you. I arrive at Starbucks sharply at 5 p.m. FYI, I look like my pictures. And I'm dressed up because, you know, it's our first date. Well, it's good to see you putting the effort in, you know? I don't think I ever dressed up for a date. I always look kind of schlubby. Like, yeah, I gave my wife a bouquet of flowers for Mother's Day, and I put on a tuxedo t-shirt to do it, but, <laughs> yeah, tuxedo t-shirt's about as close as we get. Anyway, OP says, I walked in and looked around for what seemed like the longest ten minutes of my life. I looked at every face in the place. I even closely observed the workers, just in case. Heh, <laughs> that rhymes. <laughs> there was not one person in there that looked like the guy that I was talking to for weeks. I finally came to the conclusion that I was stood up. So I texted him and said, thanks for standing me up. He said, I'm here. Where are you? OP, really? I'm the only weird girl that looks exactly like her pictures standing in Starbucks, not drinking or ordering coffee yet, just looking around baffled. Being in there was unnerving enough. Yeah, because you're just standing in the middle of the room. <laughs> Grab a seat or something while you survey your surroundings. Blend, damn you, blend! <laughs> uh, to my surprise, the man that I was supposed to meet was a quiet, mature, and looked nothing like his pictures. He was dressed in workout clothes and completely ungroomed. He looked to be at least 20 years older than his dating profile pictures. He was so old that... I didn't even know that it was him ordering coffee right in front of me. He turned and asked, If I was Melissa. I shockingly said, Yes. In my head, I was saying, Ew, creeper, no. <laughs> You're like my dad's age. Which is the correct response, I thank you. Uh, he then asked if I was going to order coffee. Uh, then he would wait for me. I paid for my own coffee. A theme among many dates. I think I must look rich or something. I mean, it ain't 50 cent coffee. You, you got a $7 drink? Yeah, I'm not gonna pony that up for somebody I just met. Sorry, not sorry. You wanted equality, here you go. <laughs> uh, presumptuous. Anyway, OP says, after I got my coffee, I thought we would sit down and chat a bit, but instead, Mr. Starbucks said that he had to go take his dog, who was in the car, <laughs> to the dog park, and he would really like for me to join them. Oh, OP doesn't even have a dog? This is weird. She says, wait, you want to go have our first date at a dog park? You know I don't even have a dog, right? <laughs> I mean, what will we even do there, Mr. Starbucks? Well, it's my routine. I get Starbucks and then I go to the dog park with my girl. Ew. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> OP, your, your girl? Mr. Starbucks, yeah, she's the love of my life. I have to see if she likes you. Ew, what? No, ew. She's not happy to see me as an individual. She's happy because we're going to the dog park. So me, baffled and speechless, I just nodded my head and got in the car and followed him to the dog park. <laughs> on the drive over, I was tempted to just keep on driving and drive right back home, but... I wanted to know why he had old pictures up, and I was bound and determined to find out. Because he likes creeping on younger chicks. Because he's more confident in the pictures where he isn't bald and fat. 
None of them are going to be good reasons. <laughs> I say, yeah, flip a bitch and let's get out of here. I don't want to go to the stupid dog park. Anyway, once we got there, I wasn't surprised that the dog received more attention than I did. He talked to the dog and petted the dog and loved on the dog, smiled and joked around with the dog, and I stood there like a planted tree, observing this bizarre event, waiting for him to strike up a conversation with me. <laughs> it really is strange. Maybe Mr. Starbucks is slightly autistic. I even watched him pick up crap off the floor and then continued to talk to me about his dog as if this was a normal interaction on first dates. It is if you boogie 2988. You checked out those videos yet? I've only done a couple of them, but man, they were a blast. What a hoot! <laughs> when Mr. Starbucks did talk to me, he wasn't asking questions. He wasn't trying to start up conversations either. It was as if he was talking to another dog. Very commanding and very much how he interacted with his dog. It was like he was talking to me through his dog. For example, Princess thinks you're special. She'd like to get to know you better. She thinks we should do this again. We will do this again. That is unsettling as shit. Doggy, why are you talking? Nothing, I'm just possessed with demons. Oh! <gasps> <laughs> Oh, he says, gosh, if only I had an animal that I could talk through, then I could answer back with, what a shame, Godzilla doesn't seem to be having a good time. Maybe we shouldn't do this again. The smell of poo and barking dogs isn't really making much of a good first impression. Instead, I just had to bite the bullet and end the date with a more human approach. I finished my Starbucks coffee, took one last look around the smelly dog park, <laughs> and thanked my middle-aged man for a wonderful new experience, and gracefully told him that I was mildly allergic to dogs, so yeah, it would never work out. But before I left, I had one question. When did you take those pictures, Mr. Starbucks? Like, last year or something. OP? Huh. Is that year in dog years? <laughs> As I left, he didn't even answer. He continued to play with Princess and talk to her as if she was the only female in the place. This is a really weird dynamic. What I learned from this date, don't trust pictures or first dates at the dog park, especially when you don't have a dog. Yeah, especially when it was just a, a giant belly flop at Starbucks. I guess OP might be a little curious or something like that. But I don't know, as soon as I got catfished, I would have been like, you know what? <laughs> You don't look like the person I agreed to meet. It's that simple. But yeah, the creepy dog stuff really kind of took it up a notch, didn't it? I got something else that's kind of creepy. Why don't we check out a date inside of a cemetery? Ooh! Believe it or not, cemeteries are not a good idea. I mean, yes they are, because where else are you going to keep the dead people? But yeah, the living people, what the hell are you doing there? Unless you're visiting the dead people, you stay out. <laughs> a few summers ago, I was back into the crazy world of OK Cupid. Yeah, he's just OK. <laughs> I had some lovely conversations with some cool guys, but this one fella really stuck out. He seemed sweet, intelligent, and like he actually had his shit together, but I was so, so wrong. <laughs> Pulled the wool right over your eyes, did he? So, after a couple of weeks of chatting, we finally set a time for a middle-of-the-day date, as I'm pretty cautious about online dating. I let him call the shots, and I was excited about the hint of plans that he was telling me. Turns out, those hints of plans were him trying to figure out a way to spend no money. <laughs> Side note, we'd already discussed paying for ourselves beforehand, as this was more of a get-to-know-you situation. Regardless, I still thought a lunch was going to happen, paying for myself. But no. Dude literally brought water bottles from the trunk of his car in summer to avoid getting a soda or stopping anywhere to eat or drink. Again, midsummer. Yeah, it's also giving you your daily supply of microplastics. <laughs> Say thank you very much. I love hot trunk water. If I get a little tea bag, <laughs> we could steep it and, and then we'd really be cooking with gas. 
<laughs> he took me to a main street of a decently historical town where we walked and walked and walked. <laughs> Normally, I love these dates, but again, it's super hot and very humid. Also, it's not easy getting to know someone when all they want to do is look at antiques and talk about their ex. I suggested multiple times that we stop for some food or a cool beverage as I was starting to get uncomfortably warm. I was thoroughly shot down. Cool. He really is just a, a super cheapskate, isn't he? Not even a couple bucks for soda, quench your thirst or something? He's like, nah, I got my trunk water, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, you don't need his permission, though, OP. Don't make it a suggestion. You tell him, I'm going to do this. You can follow me or not. And then maybe he doesn't. And then thank God for that. <laughs> we finally leave that place and stupid me. I agree to get into his car as he says he has a surprise for our next activity. In hindsight, this was incredibly dumb of me. I mean, yeah, the fact that you went on the daytime date. Hey, that's great OPSEC right there. But people do disappear in the middle of the day, especially if you get into his car. At least OP's got it in hindsight. Uh, won't let that happen again. <laughs> he pulls up to a cemetery, and I am beyond weirded out at this point, since he refused to really talk or put on any music while in the car. Just a quiet, awkward ride. <laughs> uh, that is so unsettling. Does he have zip ties and shovels that lie in the trunk? Is this where it all ends? I can imagine the thoughts going through your head while riding around with an unknown creep. So anyway, we get to the cemetery to search for his friend who has been dead for seven years. Apparently, this guy has never been to see his buddy before and decided that this was the perfect chance to roam the hills in 95 degree heat on our first date. After being a decent sport about the whole thing, I asked him to drive me back to my car, in silence, <laughs> and as soon as I got home, I blocked him on everything. That, so far, has been the worst date of my life. I know it wasn't creepy, but the lack of awareness this dude had was astounding. Yeah, he's definitely seen a few too many movies. He wants to be like the cool, mysterious loner guy who hangs out in the cemeteries, even though I've never been to see my friend here before. I just thought maybe you'd want to meet him too, because he meant a lot to me seven years ago. I haven't really moved on since then. <laughs> uh, I think I've got the whole life story of this guy figured out. And yes, unsettling is a good word. I'm glad it didn't turn out as horrible as it could have. And we've learned some valuable lessons that we will apply next time. Right? Right? Guess all that remains to be seen, but we'll continue on into our next story. Hell date! <laughs> it keeps getting better and better. TLDR, creepy dude, crappy first date. Creepy dudes, that's the good stuff, that's the juice! Give it to me! So, not too much backstory, but it is a long story. I have a broken heart and went to the thirst trap known as Tinder. The guy was kinda cute. The guy and I matched on Tinder at like 6 a.m., and I only know that because I was woken up by his message. Like I said, he was kinda cute, so I answered and he asked to call. I thought, how forward, and gave him my number and he called immediately. Not setting off any red flags for you yet? Yeah, he's a pretty face, love doing whatever he wants. <laughs> uh, come on now. I was impressed with his courage to do this. Yeah, I'm equally impressed with your courage to allow it, OP. Oh wait, that doesn't take courage at all. <laughs> he asked what I was going to do, and I told him, Work, I'm boring, haha. -ha. He let me know that he was not working that day. I had work early that morning, so I was getting ready as we talked. He was telling me all about his car that he was so proud of, which is an odd thing to tell a stranger, and that he lived with his mom. <laughs> OP, which of those things is odder to you? <laughs> <laughs> Some dudes like cars, but being real up front with the living with the mom thing, nah. I mean, maybe they're young, but they're old enough to have adult adventures. Get your own place, Jesus. It's part of growing up. It's part of independence. I know people hate when I say it, but I'm going to say it again. It might be scary or stressful, but it'll help you find yourself. Try it. You'll see. Uh, living with your mom at the age of 31, wow, not young at all, okay, <laughs> is a red flag for me. 
I'm a college student, and it just threw me off. Yeah, living with the mom and the decade age gap, all right. With the extreme forwardness, I'm going to say that's three red flags. I think it's time to get off the ride. First paragraph, get off the ride. <laughs> uh, uh, he asked if he could see me that day, and I said, sure. I get off work at five, and we could meet halfway. That way, neither of us is driving four hours tonight. I mean, unless you count there and back again. How cute would he have to be to commit to something like that on such short notice? <laughs> uh, ah, couldn't be me. He asked me to go all the way to his house to meet him, and he said that he'd cook dinner. Me, being the hungry college kid I am, agreed and threw out another red flag. What's your count up to, two? Mine's up to four. <laughs> I got off work and got a small gas station burger because I had a bad feeling about this whole thing. Then pull the plug. <laughs> I told him I was on my way and that I would be there in two hours. My first day of classes was the next day, so I used the time in the car to calm down from being so irritated that I was driving all the way to Memphis, Tennessee. This is important information. I get to where the GPS says his address is, and his house is littered with Christmas ornaments. This is the middle of January, and I thought, Oh, no. <laughs> I called him and asked him if his house was the one with all the Christmas lights and lasers, and he confirms. I hate the Christmas holiday, and I knew that it wasn't a good match at all. This is the final red flag, as far as I'm concerned. Then why'd you even go inside? Also, how can you hate Christmas? What the fuck? <laughs> I hate Christmas! Uh, I am concerned that the lights are up in the middle of January. Doesn't show much uh, gumption or, or stick to itiveness or, or timetable of any sort. At a glance, his life is looking like a mess, is what I'm saying. OP says, I had just driven two hours to get there right after work, so I needed a break from driving. And go hang out at Starbucks. You don't have to do this. <laughs> I let him know that I was definitely there, and he came out of his house in nothing but red flannel pajamas. I am mad. I'm dressed nicely, and this man is in his fucking jammies. <laughs> he walked up to me and kissed my lips without my permission, and he had to stretch to do so because he's short. Height doesn't matter, but... It does add to the package somehow. Okay, yeah, then it fucking matters. <laughs> you could just say that. Uh, I was kind of taken aback. I had never met this man in my life. He takes me inside to meet his mom and grabs my ass in front of her. Again, without my permission. Is nobody going to say anything? We're not going to correct this behavior in any way? Just, just let him keep on doing the thing he always does. Mostly because nobody has bothered to correct him. I will correct him. Tell me where he lives. We can reprimand him physically. <laughs> OP says, I had dated a man for four years, and he would never disrespect me or his mother like that. I was angry. Then this guy asks what I want for dinner. His mom says, we have macaroni in the fridge. And I kid you not, he takes a plate of leftover macaroni out of the fridge and warms it up for me. <laughs> Uh, after a two-hour drive, dude, uh, you better slap that shit out of his hands and be like, No! <laughs> That's bad! Where have you put in effort anywhere in your life? He didn't have to because we're one of the pretty people, you see. But unfortunately, it does breed that special kind of laziness, and it makes me really glad that I'm sort of ugly. <laughs> uh, so we go back to his room for privacy and a clean place to sit. Dude, no. Dining room table. Just, just clear all the newspapers off at first. Because that's what I'm imagining. Just a giant hoarder house. <laughs> all that day, he wasn't working. And the house is a fucking wreck. But uh, whatever, I guess. I'm lazy sometimes, too. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> this guy made it a lifestyle. I sit on the edge of his very pink bed. I also hate the color pink. Pink is punk, dude. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he had the TV up so loud that we had to yell to communicate. I jacked the remote and turned that sucker down, and then we really talked. He told me that he has ADHD, and I tell him that I have depression. 
he asked me, would I have to be depressed about? Yeah, that's totally how depression works, by the way. It's definitely a choice. Don't let us crazies fool ya. I mean, maybe he is trying to help, I guess. My wife gets so sad when she sees me in the depression and she's like, what can I do to make you feel better? And I'm just like, it, it'll pass, you know? Some days the brain chemicals just ain't hitting right. And that's fine. But I can tell she wants to help so bad. And I don't know what to tell her other than I need time and space. But yeah, this guy's definitely not doing that out of altruistic reasons. Just another excuse to talk about my wife. Don't let us crazies fool ya. <laughs> then he climbs on top of me again without permission and ends up knocking the macaroni onto the floor. <laughs> uh, macaroni in a pot. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Mama, that's what good pussy sounds like. Uh, this is awful. I shove him off of me and tell him to pick it up. He picked up the macaroni and sat back on the bed. <laughs> he tells me that I look young and pretty, like I'm 15. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> ah, my spine. Uh, yeah, that's a spine imploding comment right there. It it makes him want intercourse with me. What the heck? I don't say anything. I mean, what do you really say to that? Get against the wall, I guess. <laughs> Take him out back. Chemically castrate him. You're 30. A 15-year-old's half your age. Oh, my God. <sighs> he got up to show me all the nice clothing he had in his closet. Yeah, all paid for by mommy. <laughs> all these nice things that he could have put on instead of fucking pajama pants. He then tries to climb atop me because he's so small I throw him to the other side of the bed. <laughs> I'm pretty mad at this point. He sits up laughing and scoots closer to me to tell me how much he likes my shirt while he's reaching to grab my chest without my permission. I slap him so hard that his mom heard it from the other end of the house. I had told him repeatedly that he needed to back off. I went to check on his mom, who was hacking up a lung in the living room, and I got her some water. I stayed with her for a bit. He realized that I wasn't going back to his room and came to join us. He still hasn't called me by my name. Every other word is honey, baby, darling, sweetheart. He doesn't remember your name. He doesn't care to check the phone. Maybe he's just a fan of pet names. My wife doesn't call me by my name much. She calls me honey so much that the two-year-old calls me honey now. <laughs> uh, uh, he pointed out the photo of his dad, a police officer. His dad probably died. It looked more like a tiny memorial. He also showed me his dog. Her name is Katie, and yeah, she's also probably dead now. <laughs> She had a tumor, and it made me sad. <laughs> the bluntness of this post is killing me. <laughs> what a sentence. He asked what I wanted to do, and I asked what should have been a rhetorical question. I asked what there was to do in Memphis. And he tells me, in one of the greatest metropolitan cities in Tennessee, that there's uh, a bar and a gym. I told him that I'm driving, so I can't drink. And you don't get these adorable jelly rolls from working out. I said, we could walk. And he said, yeah, let me put on some more clothes. About fucking time. <laughs> Uh, uh, this person came out of the house with tan house shoes, a highlighter yellow t-shirt, and the most princess pink jacket I've ever seen in my life. Is he going for, like, the Ken from Barbie movie vibes? This was posted before the movie, I think. I'll be honest, the outfit offends me a lot less than all the other things he did. OP says, I know that jacket wasn't his mom's because she's larger than me. There's no way I could even fit in it. We go walking, and I look at the time. It's been a half an hour. All this trash in a half an hour? 
I said I should get back home because my first day of school was the next day and uh, I needed to get some sleep. Hey, but aren't you having a good time? No. Hey, but I'm a good kisser, right? You don't want me to answer that question. <laughs> we went back to my car and he tried to kiss me again and without my permission, I stopped his face with my hand. He asked if he'd ever see me again and I said, probably not. <laughs> How blunt this OP is really, really does tickle me. And indeed, she left. And indeed, it gets better. The next day, he messages me twice through Messenger to tell me that he had a great date that day. And I said, cool. Did you give her leftover macaroni? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm so salty at this point. He says, You're very ungrateful. You should be thankful for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure his mom really did work hard to pay for and cook it. I'm grateful to your mother, not to you for sticking it in the microwave. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, and then he blocked me. I still had his phone number. I left him a tirade on his phone before I block that. I didn't know that people like this actually existed before this point in time. Well, life's full of surprises, isn't it? I do wish it could have gone a different way, but yeah, this thing was doomed from the start. As soon as he said, I don't want to meet you halfway, you have to come to my house, that's a no-go. Meet his mom on the first date? You're the first girl he's had over to that house in quite a long time, I expect. But then again, apparently the guy's good looking enough, so perhaps he will continue on swiping and make some other woman's life completely miserable for, for one magical night <laughs> before he turns back into a pumpkin. And I hope you didn't turn into a pumpkin while making it to the end of this video. Please sign up on the Patreon if you would. YouTube membership's also very, very meaningful to me. I really do appreciate all that. If you can't support monetarily right now, I know times are tough, but you watch the video, especially this far, and I want to let you know, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye bye <laughs>